interests and behavior. Islam is not super prescriptive when it comes to thing like, things like personal likes and dislikes, right? Girls being more into sports or bricolage, boys being interested in music and art or cooking. Okay, it might not be that typical of your sex, but as long as the activity itself is not forbidden, there is no particular stigma. You know, I mean, one can pursue one's interests, so there is a latitude uh, there. And the Sunnah has lots of examples of things that in our society, modern West or whatever, you know, we might consider out of character, men crying profusely, right? Also, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not above domestic tasks in 7th century Arabia, sweeping the floor, mending his own socks, right? We don't say, oh, that's just women's work. Well, okay, maybe more typically, but it doesn't mean that, you know, it's beneath a man, for example. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, did this, right? Uh, important, we don't have an ideal of womanhood that is akin to the Victorian notion of the kind of dainty, delicate, fainting female, <laughs> you know, like, oh, like so frail and weak and whatever. We don't really see that in, in Islam. Like, okay, men and women aren't the same. Men in general are stronger than women physically. I mean, obviously that's that's not really disputable, but this idea that women are these kind of fragile porcelain, kind of like fainting, you know, this is not really, I mean, even in the West, I mean, you could say like that's, uh, you know, localizable to particular time periods and cultures, but, you know, we, we don't have this in Islam. Um, what counts as appropriate same-sex interaction is largely conventional. Many Muslim men, you know, as our people know, are very touchy-feely compared to men in the West. They're constantly hugging and kissing and, you know, in many Eastern societies, walking hand in hand, even sometimes with, you know, their fingers crossed. And this, in the West, you know, I mean, this would clearly be, you know, you'd say, okay, well, they're, they're, they're gay if two men are walking like that. In the East, um, you know, this is not taken to be uh, sexual at all. It's just, you know, friends are very, you know, close. They have close physical, you know, kind of contact. Um, however, this is changing as Western norms continue to dominate the world and propagate themselves through media and technology. I was told that, you know, when I was in Cairo in the mid 90s, it was very common for men to walk around of all social classes, holding hands in the streets and hooking arms. And I was told that no one does that anymore in Cairo. Except so I, I actually asked a friend of mine uh, who's uh, an academic in Cairo, a professor there, and uh, he said exactly what you said. Uh, he lives there now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is not good news because it means the entire Western sexual paradigm is becoming deeply imbibed even by Muslims abroad now in, in the Muslim world, right? Um, and, and now you have Cairo youth saying, oh, well, that's gay, you know, to walk holding my friend. What do you mean gay? Like, we don't have that concept in Islam. We don't have that concept. We have actions. We don't have a sexual identity to begin with. Well, but guess what? They're taking it on because, you know, again, Western norms are very aggressively pushed as the only valid ones. And Western culture continues to dominate through its products, movies, television, cinema, the internet, and so forth. And so Muslims are not, you know, exempt from being uh, affected by this, but we should be aware of it because it's not innocent, right? It has implications. Um, there are clear Islamic guidelines that transcend culture, right? So we said there was a cultural element as to what is appropriate same-sex interaction. That's not without limits. So again, we've seen there's a prohibition of seeing or touching the aura or private parts of someone of the same sex, specifically, pr particularly prohibited in the hadith to lie naked together, other, together under one sheet, even if the lights are off, because, well, you know, I mean, that's a very precarious position to be in. So there are clear Islamic guidelines that kind of transcend culture, but within these guidelines, cultures can differ on these things. Intersex individuals, the khumtha, there's a, you know, quite um, uh, extensive uh, uh, Islamic um, uh, uh, discussion of, of the khumtha, the intersex individual. I will not talk about it here. We have plenty of work and I'll show in the resources. You can read a lot about this topic, gender identities disorder. Um, again, it would be seen more as a psychological or emotional condition. It's not a third sex or a woman, a re actual woman actually trapped in a man's body. This is kind of a foreign concept, but it would be seen as a a psychological or emotional mismatch between the body, which again can be very acute, and very painful, and very real for people. But the idea is how do we deal with it and how do we conceptualize it? Mm. Um, and we said hormonal and surgical transition procedures are not permitted Islamically. 